Hi guys, and welcome to part 3 of this tutorial set on how to make a airport for prepared or FSX, depending on what you're using. In the last one we cleaned up the AFCAD a little bit, but we weren't finished, so we're going to finish that off for the base AFCAD, and then we'll start looking at updating a couple of the building areas and things like that. So, like when we were working on the other end, we can look here, see that this is off, so we need to fix it. For a start, it should be a pappy. And in case you're wondering how to work out what you need on your charts, if you go to CASA, so just let me get the right website here. So if we go to the AIP, you'll get to this page. Under publications, you hit OK and then you go to departure and approach procedures. Aerodrome and procedure charts. Now we're doing Williamtown. So if we have a look at our aerodrome chart, we're actually going to need both pages of this one. You can see one we've got the symbol showing that we've got the pappy here. This is a symbol for a arrestor wire. These are the symbols for the uh, windstocks. And these are for hazards. And then the fact that we have an NDB here, we have a TAC can here, and the like, as well as all our runway numbers. And if we look at page 2, we can see Pappy 3 degrees. We've got a 50 foot high intensity runway lighting and hail cat one approach lighting. So this needs to come down the runway a little bit. We'll try about 300 meters. Now I believe we worked out that it was 15 on the other end. We can double check. That moves that onto the right spot. Now if we go to our lighting we'll see that we've got culvert approach lighting, which is probably about the closest we're going to get to what's actually there. But we'll if we come back here we can also see that we had high intensity approach lighting. This is runway lighting, this is approach lighting. We don't have any touchdown, so... The big one we're going to say is probably rail on, which will give us our full end light rather than just the three. It's one of those ones where you play work out. Uh, we need to continue fixing up our taxi signs and we'll actually go over all of these and double check that they actually are labelled correctly and all that fun stuff just like we need to resize some of these but if we don't move them then we end up with them in weird places like the middle of the runway which is never fun
I'll say that's correct. So we definitely got that in the right spot last time. We need to add this taxiway up to here to all the new parking area up here. But to begin with we want to get what's already here done. The uh, tower is actually more over here. All these blue lines are from my edge lighting. Um, probably the easiest thing for us to do is to actually just get rid of it for the moment. Or apron edge lighting, depends on what you want to call it. Edge lighting. We're calling it go away. Move some of these buildings more in line with where they should be. Like I said in this pass, we're more concerned with using stock items. Um, we'll look at making some unique buildings and the like, especially the sheds. Um, later. Now occasionally you may need to drag the aprons out of the way. Occasionally you may need to just tell the signs to go away. I mean, one of the big ones is that it's fairly, you don't always have taxiway signs on military bases. At least not as they depicted here. We'll sort most of these signs out in a little while, but A it's a designated blank. Okay, that's E. Need a kink in it there. We'll fix it up in a minute. Down to E. So we need to add a taxiway here. Oh, I want that one to go away. So we come up here, taxiway for the moment. Like so, and you'll notice we've got the wrong colour. How do we fix that? Well, it goes off here, so we actually want asphalt, and would say that's probably about. I'll go for 20 metres. More like it. We already know that most of these are too wide. How we fix that up is we just jump in here and we go, you need a bit 20. You need a bit 20. Uh, 
up here probably could actually be dirty just in there. But then it goes. This one's probably actually about a ten. No, I'd say it's a fifteen. Twenty-five on this set. Now this one we know is extremely narrow. And I will openly state we will end up with issues like this when we're doing taxiways this way. Um, flight sim tends to be like that. And I mean this one here is obviously a maintenance area. It's um for the hawks I'd say. Nope, that one's more like a 15. Yeah, uh, we could do it. But we won't. The reason this snapped to 25 too is because both these. This one here is 25. So it defaulted to the larger of the two. And you, no matter what you do, you're not going to get it perfect with the stock standard AFCAD. Um, just isn't going to happen. We should be like five if we're lucky. It's not even really a taxiway, I don't think. If we go have a look at this, yeah, it's not even a real taxiway. When we get something like this where it's clearly 30 and this one's drop this back to 25.
Explorer 15. And it clearly becomes a 10 or so there. Um, while we're up here, we might as well actually get in the start points. We'll stick in some military ones. Now something a lot of people forget, these have sizes. As you can see, it's got a radius. It's a radi radius. It's from this side to... It's from here to here. It's not a diameter. Radius from the middle out. So you don't put the wingspan in, you put half your wingspan. You'll notice we didn't actually get a taxiway on that last little bit. We need to put in an apron and the big one is that really look like a concrete apron up there so we're just going to put in a bit of concrete. What we can do here too is I don't know if I've got the Royal Australian Air Force in here. There we do. So we could put Aussie in there. Um, I'll leave it as a parking spot too for now. And those that we've got, oh, these are actually where you de-arm the aircraft, um, so they're not actually parking per se, so we're not going to make them parking, but here we do have parking, um, we're actually going to stick military cargo, and you'll notice it defaults to stupid sizes because it's designed for the really, really big aircraft, but I tend to find 30 metres or so on, a, on the radius tends to work. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it. And what we're actually going to do here is we're going to come up to the guideline. We're going to add a guideline. here just to make our lives a little easier. So that gives us our parking there. Is this concrete? Block. Then we're going to have a taxiway that comes from here down to here. From here down to here. You may ask why I don't have it running all the way down. We will see that in a moment. From here to here. Then we're going to go to Apron. Now the big one with Aprons is it doesn't actually make a taxiway. It draws them on the back of
thing and actually what we want to do we want to make certain that it'll work with AI so for uh, And that's the actual reason we're doing these links, despite the fact that we'll cover most of these um, with custom poly ground polygons and the like. All this means that if you're wanting to use the default AI traffic for some reason, it will work. It also gives you parking spots that you can start up at and stuff like that. So, what we're going to do here first off, you'll notice this one. This is a fuel depot. Um, not even certain this is where they refuel, given the fuel tanks are over here. I'm fairly certain most of the time they'd probably actually use fuel trucks, but We've got a special parking type for fuel and this bounding box which is a fuel trigger if you need to make one of these and we need to make that building there bigger if you need to make one of these you go add um, where is it in here it's been a little while since I've Done it. Uh, you go fuel, tap, that gives you the actual fuel start up, and then to give it the fuel trigger, this one it was add fuel trigger. Now let us put an effect which I'm actually going to, we're going to be using this for adding in some um, new bits and pieces we'll make them we're not going to use any of the stock stuff and we're definitely not going to use any Orbexus stuff but we will basically be making some lights um, is it all start? no It's been a while, I've not had to put fuel depots in. I normally don't use them. It'll be in the manual somewhere, so if you actually do need to put one of these in. I'd um, suggest doing it, looking in the manual for it. the moment we don't, we're just going to leave the custom one there and we're going to fix up some of these building sizes. So we can do that with these sets by doing this, the width looks more like 50 by 50. Now, you'll notice these have got different settings, so we can have them show up at normal, dense, very dense, s sparse, etc. So if you've got certain items you need it to show up at, and I mean most of these ones along the front,
They weren't showing up because... I mean, they're fairly important. You don't want people parking inside hangars. Well, you know what I mean. In you don't want them parking in those ones. Um, this is more like 40 by 40. Okay, no, we'll try 60 by 60. Not only that, this comes in handy for working out some of the hangers we'll need to make later. Um, now we want to add some more combat park spots here. Again, we're going to draw a helper down. Middle of most of these carports. The reasoning for that is it just lets us make these fairly quick and simple, have them line up. In a straight line. It's hard to tell if there is actually a park there. Now it does appear that these sets, these small ones, are for to the park.
So that gives us those parks. We could put some more in up here, which we probably should. I'm actually just going to do this one. I'm going to stick two in here, but what we're going to do, we're going to make these about 15 and 15. Spin them around. Tuck them in just here. So there's the military side done. Now we need to come over to the civvy side and we need to add in some of the civvy aprons. So these are... gets hard when you start looking at this because some people will call them gates, other will call, others will call them ramps. I tend to put the ones over by something like this which is the terminal building as ramps and something down here as um, sorry as gates and if it's off like down here this will be a ramp Others will say that a gate has to be at a terminal. Personal preferences, people. That's all it is. Especially when you've got a chart like this that doesn't actually you know, nothing on here is giving you the actual um, specific positions. Yes, I'm aware there are more. There's a couple of small ones there and the like. We're not going to be too bothered by them. The big ones work. And in the end that's actually more what's important. And we just noticed that this needs to be About 20. So, what do you do if you've got something like this?
Wait, you need more of a curve and you've already done it. Just come up, tap, click, drag, done. Now obviously these really do not need the sidelines on them. Um, just like it's definitely not going to have side lights. Probably wouldn't have lighting but will. So now we need to connect these ones up, same deal, apron, go right down to here, we are going to do, I'm going to double click on this, in this case we don't have a line down on this side. On this set we do have a line, but we probably don't have lights. I mean, normally you'd be marshalled in along here. Um, the other thing is that yes, most Australian airports don't have taxiway edge lighting like this depicted here. Um, you can normally check on the charts it'll mention um, here, green centre line and there may be lighting along the edge of the taxiways every now and then but nowhere near what's depicted normally by flight sim. So we have some green centre line. I mean, we've got to go through and we've got to re make certain other labels alright. So we'll 
probably finish doing a lot of that in that pass. I tend to jump around a little bit while working on this stuff. Undo that one, didn't go to the right spot. Sometimes this happens too, especially when you've got them as close as these are. You'll notice that because we've got That link set up, everyone that follows it follows the same. That's part of the reason why we go in and check. You may occasionally get stuff like that happen in the weird drawing arcs here. There's not a lot you can do about it. It's doing its best to depict how the look and flight seem. It happens. Um, it's part of the reason why the new ground poly system is such a big deal because it lets us bypass so many of this, things like this. Um, reverse the direction on that one. So now we'll leave it leave it as is. Normally you can actually set up specific routes by setting up the directions on each of these, but you don't have to. It'll do its flight sim will do its best to route things as needed. What is needed though before we get too far is to fix that line up there. Get it more in line with where we want it. Now a big mistake a lot of people make is they'll 
draw a link to these taxiways and I'll do something like this, we'll do it over here I'll do something like this and I'll think that this is joint because it looks joint the problem is this isn't joint and if you were to do an actual the AI was to use it they won't be able to go down it you need to make certain that all your taxing links are actually linked um, there's no correct method for doing it just eyeball, look, check part of the reason why, other than the fact that it tends to stop that side ticking as much, I draw from my parking spots. The parking spots are the, some of the easiest places to have it happen. And by doing this you can double check that they're done properly because the taxi lines will always draw to the parking spot. So if you're drawing away and you mess it up and the arrow's pointing in the direction you were just drawing, you know you messed it up. there we go so now for most people's use drag that back over like so grab down here Like so. So for some people, what we've got here, for the most part, would be enough. Um, they'd probably put the apron in here, which we need to do. And then the other part of what would happen is...
I might put some apron, custom apron edge lighting on using the edge light tool here. You just click and drag like we did on the boundary fence part stuff. Um, and then a custom ground poly because we want we've got a couple of things we need to do with this exclusion. Um, we need it along the runway areas here to stop all edge in. And the way the easiest and quickest way of doing a lot of that is just to trace your border fence with it. So you get something like that eh, wrong one. It's a custom ground poly. This one. Like this and we tell it that we want to exclude the autogen and it won't put the autogen in. The other big one is that these are vortex. Now in prepared that's not so much of an issue because we can actually put a VLR radio in our um, stuff but in flight sim and the like it is and this is just DMA, it's not a VOR. Now there's two ways we can do it. We can add a VOR DME. And because we've already got the VOR there, we could just um still we could because we've got the DME there we could just stick a VLR on top of it and be done with it. Um But the way most people tend to do it is they'll do it like this. So this is it's WLM. It's ident is WLM. It's a Please tell it that it's a high and it's on one one three decimal three. Its range it is we could actually take its range out to So normally if you select what type it'll adjust its range for you. So I'm gonna set it to a high. Tap OK and now we're going to actually drag it over the existing Vortac. But before we do, we need to add an exclusion zone. So we do this and we want the easiest ways to do all that. You can do beacons like so. And then drag the new one over it. What it'll do is this excludes the existing beacon. So when we compiled, we'd have ours. Or, rather than doing that way, because we already had the DME there, you should be able to do that as VOR. And you'd have a VOR. NDB, uh, VOR DME there, and the NDB is over down here. You'll notice we can't move the stock once, despite the fact that um, sometimes you really wish you could. So that's where we're going to leave this video. Uh, next one, we'll start looking at some of the more customised pod ground poly data and stuff like that. Don't forget to save your airport. And yeah, thanks for watching.